good afternoon everyone so today we will talk about advanced cardiac life support or acls um, not only for this academic but acls will be very much uh, important in your day-to-day uh, -day life and day-to-day -day nursing practice and for other lessons as well so we will start on this presentation uh, how uh, and uh, we will go on with the presentation and we will study and we will discuss about ACLS today right first of all as you know when there's an emergency or uh, when there's uh, something this is a brief introduction to the uh, ACLS with uh, trauma care uh, management first of all when we receive patients we go for triage as you know triage yes there we categorize patients and we do the primary survey and uh, as shown in this uh, slide after primary survey you go for resuscitation then we go for secondary survey then we stabilize the patients we transfer patients to the definitive care what is definitive care if that patient needed to go to the neurological department we will send them to the neurological department if the patient needs to go to the uh, medical board we will send them to the medical board like that the definitive care right so then uh, what are the uh, management goals these things uh, comes under uh, trauma life support so i am not going to talk about these things in detail since you have the trauma introduct uh, the trauma life support introduction in acls uh, i am just mentioning this Ma in management goals in during the primary survey we examine we diagnose and we treat life threatening injuries and during secondary survey we perform a complete thorough patient examination to en ensure no other injuries are missed right and there are two things in red color start resuscitation at the same time as perform the entire primary survey do not start secondary survey until completing primary survey always this is there's a pattern first primary survey then the secondary survey right so what are the major traumas here uh, they have mentioned a fall from more than three meters of height road traffic accident burn wound or a fracture we can take it as a major trauma then physical findings for a major trauma should be respiratory distress blood pressure less than 100 now this is systolic blood pressure that you should know then if the Glasgow coma scale is less than 13 and if there's a penetrating injury and if the more than one area is injured right then this is triage what is triage that is sorting according to priority who are the patients who need priority and who are the patients who don't need priority treatments right we have practice always triage Under primary survey, we have five components A, B, C, D, E. What are those? Airway, breathing, circulation, disability or damage, and exposure of the patient. Those things you know. Then, in this diagram, also you can refer to these things how A, B, C, D, E works. In management of airway first of all we should talk to the patient and we should look and listen for signs of obstruction if the airway is obstructed we have to open the airway and clear the obstruction then what are the techniques of opening airway first of all we have to position patient on a firm surface not on a mattress or something like that on a firm surface maybe on floor then tilt the head you know what head tilt then lift the chin to open the airway you have to lift the chin then remove foreign body if visible if there's any visible foreign body we have to remove that of course then clear secretions then give oxygen at a rate of five liters per minute so this is the general standard and that might differ from place to place uh, place to well place as in from situation to another situation right in a case of trauma we have to do stabilize cervical spine 
did do not lift head open airway using jaw thrust and remove foreign body if visible if there's a trauma right then the airway devices to manage the airway you know those are oropharyngeal airway these shown in these pictures are oropharyngeal airway which ensures air supply from mouth to pharynx then breathing under the letter of b breathing there are three components look listen and feel then we have to be careful about chest decompressions there are some points where we have chest decompressions if the breath sound is absent or diminished in one side or if there is evidence of chest trauma or rib fracture we can come to a conclusion that that indicates chest decompression of the patient and the reasons or the diagnosis of this condition could be pneumothorax tension pneumothorax hemothorax so hemo pneumothorax via blood and air both are trapped then we have to ensure circulation and if the circulation is not enough or if there is hypoperfusion we and uh, we have to be careful about incidence or we have to be careful about areas where we can suspect hemorrhagic shock then if there is any active bleeding we have to stop the bleeding as shown in this diagram you know how does artery bleed how does a vein bleed and how does a capillary bleed in artery bleeding we have a pulsatile flow or pulsating flow we say in venous bleeding we have a slow steady flow like that in a capillary bleeding we have a slow and even flow then d stands for disability or damage how can we check disability or damage first of all we can use avpu scale alert verbal stimuli painful stimuli and unresponsiveness sometimes patient must might be alert they are very well aware of their environment date time and where they are sometimes they might respond to verbal stimuli sometimes they might not respond to verbal stimuli but they might respond for a painful stimuli or they might be unresponsive that that is near to unconsciousness then we have another a definitive or a good or better measurement to check the disability damage or consciousness that is the very famous glasgow coma scale or gcs and the score is out of 15 that you all know then we have exposure we have to remove patient clothing and examine whole patient or patient in a whole right in which conditions we can say the patient has been stabilized when the resuscitation completed when the analgesia administered when the lab specimen sent and when fractures immobilized and bleeding is stopped we can say that we have stabilized the patient and we should not forget to complete the relevant documentation and we can transfer patient to ward or ot operation theater or other center for care this uh, this slide refers about fractures of first aid first of all we have to do what rest and keep eyes compression keep elevated and referral to the definitive care this care type is given by the mnemonic rice or i c e r then about burns 
so burns you know how to check the burn surface area we have two main charts one is rule of nine then we have lund and browder chart then how to administer uh, how to, or how to correct the fluid balance we have parkland's formula i think you are aware of these things right before starting advanced cardiac life support or acls we should know some things about vls vls stands for basic life support when you are getting the qualification of acls you cannot complete that without the qualification of dls so that is very much important to know dls before studying acls as i mentioned basic life support or bls uh, is the most basic method of saving a patient's life first of all what we have to do again check for responsiveness as shown in this diagram first of all we should check for the responsiveness then shout out for help and activate the emergency response system in our settings in sri lanka in south asian settings we might not have this active emergency response system but as you know we do have the cardiac arrest system a cardi how do we the cardiac arrest teams we have so such like that we have to activate the system then check for uh, obtain the aed and defibrillator uh, what are these things these are machines where we can get a support to activate the uh, or start the activity of heart again then we have to check for breathing and pulse and we cannot waste more than 10 seconds for this so we have to check for breathing and pulse but that should be less than 10 seconds we cannot check more than 10 seconds right then begin cpr if no pulse detected what is this cpr cpr means cardio pulmonary resuscitation if there is no pulse detected not even a weak pulse we can start cpr immediately if pulse is present we have to start rescue breathing pulse is present means what that indicates that heart is working but if there is no pulse then we can start cpr because if there is no pulse that indicates that heart is not working at all then in cpr we have to give 100 to 120 compressions per minute and we have to give or we have to deliver one breath per every 5 to 6 seconds again cpr in cpr or cardiopulmonary resuscitation cardiac pulmonary resuscitation cab considered the most important before starting cpr what is cab cab stands for circulation airway and breathing those days it was abc as you know now nowadays they consider cab as the most important first of all we check patient's consciousness by shake him and ask him verbally hello can you hear me like you can shake the patient and ask hello you can hear me we are checking whether the patient is responsive or not then we have to check pulse pulse means just pulse will be enough no need of rhythm rate amplitude or anything if patient is not conscious check central pulse on carotid artery here there there is a blank for that we have to check the central pulse on carotid artery as you know and as i mentioned before we cannot waste more than 10 seconds to check pulse and breathing then we have to start the chest compressions if there is no pulse how to start chest compression or how to start deliver to cpr we have to keep two fingers towards upside from cephid process and we have to keep our one hand over the other and lock it with fingers and i hope you all know the method of uh, giving cpr normally the ratio what is the ratio we give 30 compressions and two breaths and in children or in very risky cases 
we have to give two breaths in every 15 seconds and we should keep our palm towards the side of the heart here as you can see from C5 process we check two fingers and after the gap of two fingers here we keep the ball of our palm towards the left side and like this towards the left side and we lock it and we give CPR how much is the depth of a CPR compression we have to press hard or we have to press the chest wall for around 6 centimeters sometimes that may harm the ribs but saving life is very much important so we have to give 100 to 200 uh, 100 to 120 compressions per minute and uh, the maximum rate is 2 compressions per second in 2 minutes or after approximately 5 cycles we can check central pulse again why are we checking central pulse because we are starting this if there is no pulse then we can use head back up or chin up methods to open the airways and to breathe we can give use mouth to mouth method or oropharyngeal tube or ambu bag or mask in case of ambu bag we can pump air to see chest movements and that's enough when we are pressing or when we are pumping air from ambu bag and if we see the chest movements We consider that as a breath. Breathing. Breathing stops in 6 minutes because breathing center stops working. If patient achieves abnormal breathing within 6 minutes, then there is an increased chance of recovery. What is this? When the patient becomes unconscious, that patient's breathing stops within 6 minutes because in 6 minutes, breathing center stops working. If patient achieves abnormal breathing, that is our target within six minutes that means breathing center is still active after six minutes only it will start to deteriorate right then cpr can go up for maximum 40 minutes if recovers in middle and then again becoming asystolic then start from beginning what is this if the patient is saved for some time and if the patient is recovered in middle of the CPR and if he goes back to asystolic level again we have to start CPR or process from beginning we cannot consider that we gave this much of a breath and we cannot continue again when you get the presentation here are some slides or some diagrams where you can refer Then we are starting our main topic today that is ACLS or Advanced Cardiac Life Support. In case of Advanced Cardiac Life Support, first of all what we have to do is to start CPR. As usual we have to start CPR. Then we are attaching patient to monitor. Now what we have to know here is Advanced Cardiac Life Support doesn't happen on roads or on uh, home settings or on uh, everywhere advanced cardiac life support happens at a definitive or a designed place or a designed environment most probably in a hospital so first of all what we have to do we have to start cpr then the second option we attach patient to the monitor or to a monitor and we are keep our eye on checking partial pressure of oxygen and we can put oxygen mask for breathing assistance uh, of course patient won't be uh, breathing when we are starting CPR breathing as in there's no pulse detected so we are putting oxygen mask for breathing assistance and we are inserting IV catheter and we prepare extra devices uh, like defibrillator to take 
uh, use uh, as soon as we need because preparing these extra equipments or extra devices may take some time right so what is the main cause of death in cardiovascular system in CVS that is acute myocardial infarction acute myocardial infarction happens due to lack of oxygen supply what is this that condition the lack of oxygen supply we call it the condition as ischemia yes as ischemia when patient stops breathing what is the main aim to resuscitate and re uh, resuscitate and restore breathing and within four to six minutes to prevent brain damage and we have to follow ACLS protocol within eight minutes right read here you need to have a current certification of basic life support to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR when was the last time you performed or assisted with BLS yes you can ask this question from yourself when did you last involved in this kind of a procedure right now what is this that's a defibrillator. later 